tonight is the conclusion class on Facebook marketing for this course. I want to show you guys some of the more advanced techniques that I use on Facebook. And I use these not only for Amazon affiliate sites that I'm working on, but I really use these strategies for pretty much anything else that I'm doing on Facebook where I want to utilize it to bring more traffic into my site or to get regular followers or to do some advertising to bring in some new followers. So while this particular class is obviously directed towards Amazon, these strategies can definitely be applied to pretty much anything that you might do as an internet marketer. So to start with, I want to show you how to create Facebook fan page tabs. Now typically with a fan page tab, you actually have to have a dedicated secure server certificate. Some shared hosting accounts actually have a shared secure server certificate, but this actually will not work in the Facebook system. Uh, in the last couple of years, they switched it over to where they require this new it's not really new, but they require it. They have this new policy where they require the dedicated certificate. And typically that costs about $75 a year to connect up to a site. And then on top of that, it's actually pretty complicated to get set up. Uh, and that's even if you're on a dedicated server. If you're on shared hosting, it is honestly even more complicated because you have to go through your web host to get it done. So to help you guys not have to worry about any of that, I have created a system that you're going to be able to use to create these fan page tabs, and they will actually be based off of my server using my secure certificate, and you won't have to worry about any of the complicated stuff there. So all you have to do to access this system is simply log in to the member area for the Azon Masterclass 2 series. When you're on your home page here where you see the list of all the classes and webinars that are in the series, just look up above here for the new link. And there's actually a menu here. You can upload uh, media such as images if you wanted to be able to add your own custom images or you can just go straight to creating new Facebook tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here and start up a new Facebook tab so you can see how this whole system works. Now, once you're in here, if you notice over here on the left, if you just click on Facebook tabs right here, you actually get to a listing of other Facebook tabs that you've created. But as you can see, there's actually all Facebook tabs and my Facebook tabs, so it's not actually going to show you any other Facebook tabs but your own. So whatever you're creating on here does stay private to you in terms of it's not going to be shared and readily seen by the other members of this particular series. The only way it's going to end up getting shared is when you're connecting it up to your Facebook account. So to get started here, I'm just going to create a basic tab for you. And this tab really isn't going to have any real purpose to start with. And I want to do this just so I can show you exactly how this whole system works so you can get everything connected and worry about understanding that part first and then we will move on and get a little bit more complicated with it and I'll show you a few examples that you can use. So I'm simply going to add in a title for this page. 
I can call this whatever I want to. Um, in a lot of cases, as long as I am selecting this checkbox right here, nobody will really end up seeing this post title. So this is kind of just something for my own reference. Now if you don't check on this checkbox down here, the post title will be shown uh, at the top of your page and uh, your page tab. So then down below here, this works just like building a post or a page on any WordPress site. You simply build a page here within this editor. If you want to add your own custom graphics to it, you're welcome to do that. You can upload those onto my server and simply use them in your page right here. For now, I'm simply going to type in the word test so there's some kind of content in this page that you can see. Now, all the way down at the bottom here, notice this text that says, after you publish your post, instructions for registering your content on Facebook will appear below. You have to actually publish your post first before you can proceed with the rest of this process. Now, you can obviously always go back and edit things if you need to, make some adjustments at a later point in time, but this simply gets the uh, rest of the process going here. We have these steps now that we can proceed through to get all of this set up. Now, the main part we're going to be focusing on here is this section right here that has all of these URLs, and I'll show you exactly where you're supposed to use those here. So at this point, we're going to pause here on this page and we're going to jump over to Facebook now. So to start with, I need to go up here to the gear icon and I'm going to create a new app. Now up here at the top, you just go to create new app and you get this pop-up window. Now here you're typing in both a display name and a namespace, and then you'll also be selecting a category. Now we did this once before. In the previous class, we created an app. This is really gonna work the same way, and in a lot of cases, nobody will end up seeing the display name or even the namespace of your app as long as you're just using this as a page tab. Now I say as long as you're just using this as a page tab because this exact process can be used for both creating page tabs and for creating real Facebook apps. Whenever you go to perhaps a Facebook game, that is always based off of a real Facebook address, and that address is named right here as the namespace. Now I'm still going to show you how to set this up as both a page tab and an app. However, the main purpose that you will uh, typically be using this for is just for the page tab. So I will uh, point that out as I go along and uh, show you the differences between those. So to start with here, I am simply going to give this a name. I will call it like page for carbon fiber. And then down below, I will simply type in a namespace. And then for the category, I'm going to select apps for pages. Now after I click on Create App and go through this wonderful CAPTCHA system here, Facebook will create my app for me and then I will be able to proceed with getting the rest of this connected up.
Now once your Facebook app gets created for you, just go into the settings link over here in the sidebar menu. Now you have your app ID right up here. We're going to need this in a few minutes. However, we're not going to need the secret this time around. We just need the app ID. Now, just like the last time, this page should look pretty familiar because we've created an app before and done some work on this exact page. However, this time we're going to be setting things up a little bit differently here. So to start with, for your app domain, instead of using your own domain name, like Carbon Fanatic in my case, we're actually going to be using my domain name that the uh, Azon Masterclass 2 website is on. So that is ryanstevensonplugins.com. Simply type that in and jump over to the contact email. Now the contact email should be something where you can be reached. You don't want to use my contact email. It's okay if this is located on a different domain name from mine. It's not going to make any difference when you're creating this app. So the next step here is to use this add platform button. We did this once before and we used the website here. Now this time we're going to be using different platforms. We can use app on Facebook to create a real Facebook app or we can use page tab to create a Facebook fan page tab. Now the thing is you can actually do both with one single app. An app could be both a standalone Facebook app and it can also run through a fan page tab. So I'm going to go ahead and set up both of these here for you just so you can see the differences. Now I've jumped back over here to the uh, Facebook tab that I'm creating on my site and I'm going down to these URLs that are listed below. Now look at the names for these. I have tab URL, secure tab URL, and then down below I have canvas URL and secure canvas URL. And if you look at the addresses a little closer, you'll notice that this one and this one are the same and these two are the same. So what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and select one of these. So I'm selecting the tab URL and I'm going to copy it. Then I will jump back over here to my Facebook app that I'm setting up. Now in the app on Facebook section it's asking for a Canvas URL and a secure Canvas URL. That was the second set of URLs that was located on my other page. However, I copied the page tab URL. So this is actually going to go down here. So in this box, page tab URL, I paste in that link. And then also right here, secure page tab URL. I paste in the same link. So now the other thing that I need to do to get this page tab set up is right here to provide a name for it. Now this name will actually be seen by public users of this tab. This thing is actually going to go on your fan page itself. Let me uh, let me pull up my fan page real quick here. Down here below where you have the like box that shows how many likes your fan page has so far, you also have other things like the photos that you've uploaded and attached to your fan page. But then these things over here, these are the fan page tabs that I've been creating. So this text label right here is the name 
that you are punching in for your page tab name. So whatever you type in here, people will actually see it on your fan page uh, underneath the icon for it. So since I'm just setting up a test page here, I'm just going to type in a name for it, test like page. Now I could simply proceed with creating this page tab as it is. If I wasn't doing the Facebook app, if I didn't have this section up here, I could simply save my changes now and not do anything else on this page. But there is a little bit more that can be done if you would like to. There's a page tab image that you can upload. It has to be a specific size. So it has to be 111 by 74 pixels. So that's 111, 111 pixels wide by 74 pixels tall. So you simply upload this icon right here and then on your fan page that's where this will show up and this is the default icon if you have not uploaded anything. Now the icon is not horribly important. It kind of depends on what your intended purpose is here with this fan page and the app that you're creating and the page tab. If you want people to be going to it through your fan page, then that would be more call for having some kind of custom icon there that might help to get their attention. However, if you're just going to be advertising these page tabs, which is what I'm going to be showing you tonight, it's not as important to include an icon because it's not going to end up showing up either way in your advertisements. So with the app up top here, I'm going to jump back over here and copy one of these Canvas URLs. Remember these are the same here, so I can use the same URL for both the normal and the secure Canvas URL. This is all that I have to do to actually set up the app is just these two URLs right here. And then this address right here, this is where my app would be accessed publicly on the Facebook website. So as you can see the namespace that I typed in right here, it shows up down below here apps.facebook.com forward slash and then whatever I typed in for my namespace. So I'm going to go ahead and save the changes to this now. And then the last thing I need to do here before I'm completely done is jump over to status and review. And then I'm simply going to flip this on and make it public. Now once again this is not something that you have to get approval to do. So the next step here, we're going to jump back once again to our uh, Facebook tab that we're setting up. This time we need the app ID. So I'm going to copy this app ID and jump back over here and there's a text box right here for step number four, record the app ID assigned by Facebook. And then I simply have to click on this save button right here. Now if you look at step number five, it says add to page link will be displayed here, but I must first record the app ID. So that's step number four. I have to proceed through this and actually save the ID here. And then I want to scroll back down to look at step five. Now step five has a link here for me. So all I have to do is click on this link and it will take me to Facebook and ask me to choose a Facebook page. So all I have to do is click on Carbon Fanatics now, click on Add Page Tab, and then I can jump back over here and my new tab is showing up test like page. 
Now, if you notice that jump down to the second row here, they give you four spots on this top row that will automatically show up without you having to click anything extra. Now, even though the photo and the like boxes up here, you can actually rearrange things if you want to. You can simply click on this and, for example, you can swap position with likes and send likes down there to where the like part isn't even seen anymore and just your page tabs are seen up here. So it just kind of all depends on where you want these things to be positioned so people can readily see them. So now, once this is set up, our page tab here, we can simply click on this to directly visit it. And as you can see, I'm still located on the Facebook website here, and the content of this page is the content that I have created on this page tab over here. So this gives me direct control over this content on Facebook, except this isn't actually located on Facebook. It's coming elsewhere off of my server. Now, the reason why you really even want to bother with doing something like this is that when you're advertising something on Facebook, people will a lot more readily interact with things and actually visit pages when they're on Facebook itself. They simply get better conversion rates than if you were to take that exact same page, put it on a standalone page of your own website and promote that through a Facebook ad. So this particular strategy can be used really in a ton of different ways. I want to show you some of these ways this evening, but then I will also be revisiting this in future classes, especially once I get to uh, the email marketing classes of this particular series, because we're going to be building on this concept even more Building a newsletter can easily be done through this method. You know, just picture nothing but a newsletter sign-up form being on this page, and you promote it directly. It's a lot easier to get people to enter in their email over here than it is on a page on your standalone website. So for now, I'm going to... Oh, wait, I can show you the, um, the app page here real quick before I proceed. So as you can see, this app page is very, very similar to my previous page, except it's not contained within a smaller width area. It's actually taking up all of the available space here on Facebook with the exception of the advertisements over here. This isn't something that you can make go away for the app pages. Whereas over here on the tab page, as you can see, there are no advertisements on the side. So this is one reason why I recommend using the fan page tabs over the app page, for example, because when you're promoting this with an advertisement, you keep people's focus here on the page that you're paying to get them to. And a lot of times you'll be wanting them to click on the like button up top, for example. Whereas when you're on just the app page here, there is no like button. It's not connected up to your fan page at all. If you've ever played, you know, any one of the Facebook games, for example, this is the window that they're using. This is where their app is built. So the app itself is located elsewhere on their own website. 
and it's just simply running through a Facebook URL. So I still wanted to show you how this is done. Um, even if you don't use it for years, maybe at some point you'll want to know, hey, how do I create a Facebook app? And it's so close to creating these Facebook fan page tabs and can be done with this exact same system. So I wanted to still demonstrate both to you. However, you don't have to proceed with creating those apps. You can just use the fan page tabs. So I am now going to take this tab page that I have set up and I'm going to build upon this concept a little bit more and show you an example that you can use. Now I provided three text files as part of the course material for this particular class and this is the first text file here, basic like page structure. Now what this code is, you can simply copy it and paste it into the content here on the pages on my website. Make sure you're in the text tab though and not in the visual tab. And then this code here has a couple different sections. I'm going to split this code up to make it a little more readable here for you so I can explain it to you. So to start with, I have a short code right here, Facebook like, like is equal to zero. And if you look a little further down, I have the exact same short code, but this time it's like is equal to one. And then I also have these two short codes, which are identical. Notice the forward slash right before Facebook like. These are the closing short codes whereas these are the opening short codes. So this opens and this closes, then this opens again and this closes again. So the content that is located in between these short codes for the like is equal to zero short code. This content will be shown when somebody is viewing your page tab but has not actually liked your fan page. And then this content will be shown when somebody has liked your fan page. So what you can do with this setup here is give people a reason to like your fan page. And then whatever you are offering them, you give them access to that here. Now this particular strategy can really be combined with a lot of other different strategies. If you had some type of tutorial that you wanted to share with people, you could offer that tutorial here, a free ebook or something like that to get them to like your fan page. If you wanted to invite them to join a newsletter where you update them with free content on a regular basis. You could also force them to like your fan page before they're given access to join that newsletter. You can also use it for things like getting people to join your Facebook groups or you can simply use it just to attract new likes on your fan page. So just to show you how this all works, I'm going to update this page. And let you see it live on Facebook. So as you can see, all I did here was change my content and then click on the update button. I haven't made any adjustments whatsoever on Facebook. 
Now, I could come here and refresh this page, but as you can see, I've already liked my own fan page, so I'm simply going to unlike it. So I can show you both sides of this particular strategy. So now that I've unliked my fan page, you can see that the content automatically changed. So I have text over here. So this would be text that I would modify. I could use text or I could use some type of custom graphics if I wanted to. Basically to convince the person to like my fan page. And then this graphic that I've provided for you guys here is meant to draw their attention up to the like button, which is the obvious goal here. So once somebody clicks on the like button, the page automatically transforms into whatever you have put in the second shortcode. So this would be text or other image content perhaps that you're showing to people to give them access to whatever it was that you were offering on the other end. So now obviously this is just a really basic example and not something that you would actually use. So I wanted to provide you with at least one example here in this class that you could use on your sites. That can be found in the second text file, the example like page structure. This code here is just like the code that I was just showing you. You can see there's a Facebook like is equal to zero. Further down, there's a Facebook like is equal to one. So I have some content being shown when people have not liked my page, and then I have more content to show when people have liked on my page. So while this is the same example, it is a more complicated example and something that is um, meant to be used as it already is with uh, actually one minor adjustment in it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my code here and jump back to my content and paste this in. Now the one adjustment that I need to make is right here at the end of this code. In all capital letters it says your Facebook fan page URL. So simply go back to your fan page and copy this address up at the top and then we want to enter this in right here. So now beyond that, the only other adjustments that you would really want to make are changing some of the text in here to reference your own niche instead of mine. Up at the top I say love carbon fiber vinyl wrap. Obviously you would want to change that to reference something for your own niche. Down below here I say you are just one click away from getting daily Facebook updates discussing sweet carbon fiber wrap projects created by fans. Simply modify that one sentence to also apply to your fan page. Just tell people what they're going to be getting from the updates on your fan page by liking on your fan page. And then beyond that, this one sentence right here, thank you for liking Carbon Fanatics. Just change the end of that to your own fan page name. So now I'm going to update this once again, and I can simply return to my page here, and I'm going to switch it from like to unlike once again. So as you can see this time, I have this graphic over here still, but what I've done is simply change this basic text that was over here into text that is styled for me. I thought this would be a lot easier for you guys to use instead of trying to provide you with graphics files that you might have to make some modifications to. So I simply wanted you to be able to 
just type in text and use it for whatever fan site you're working on. So now when somebody clicks on the like button here, they are taken to my next set of text. And then this says, thank you for liking Carbon Fanatics. Click here to check out our fan page. Now I left this uh, link incorrectly set here for a purpose. Notice when I click on it how nothing happens. This happens because of a setting right here. Open links and post forms to a new window. I need to click on this checkbox. Whenever I'm using a link within this uh, page tab or any page tab that I'm creating, when I want that link to be opened up elsewhere. So it's not going to be a part of this page tab anymore. So this would be, for example, not only a link to my fan page, but if I was linking up to a Facebook group where I wanted people to join the group, or if I was linking up to something on my own website, any of those examples would apply here you have to check uh, this open links to new window checkbox or else they're simply going to sit here and spin their wheels. So now when I refresh this page, I get my new link here and as you can see my page tab still exists but it opened the link that I set up in there into a new window for me. So as I was discussing with you before, this whole strategy once again can be applied to a lot of different strategies that you would possibly use as a marketer. And this is really how a lot of the people that solely focus on Facebook advertising, this is what they're doing to capitalize on Facebook ads and to get the best conversion rates. And to build huge newsletter lists and promote, uh, refer extra sales on products they might be promoting as an affiliate and the list really goes on and on. Simply that these fan page tabs are more effective than promoting an outside uh, page on another website. So again, I will be expanding on this more in later classes, but at least for now, this should give you some kind of a example that you can outright use, and then you could even adjust this example for other purposes, perhaps. So the next question is really, how do you then go about taking this page tab that you've created and advertising it on Facebook? if you have decided that you would like to put a little bit into advertising to help get your reader base started up quicker. While you can go onto Facebook and simply advertise to people based on their interest, for example, the, the interests that are already built into uh, Facebook, um, I actually prefer to get more targeted with my advertising and actually want to pick out the specific people that I want to advertise to instead of letting Facebook essentially choose it for me. So to accomplish this, you have to build lists of Facebook user IDs. Now I've taught this strategy before but I simply have to go back over this because this is really an important part of this particular class. That and Facebook has also changed uh, the way the system looks a little bit. So I thought it would still be worth reviewing one more time so uh, you have completely updated information on that. So in the last class, 
I demonstrated a way that you could go about getting your own Facebook user ID. This is from going to your timeline and look up above so you should see facebook.com and then whatever your username is. All you want to do is change the www right here to the word graph and then right up at the top Facebook tells you what your user ID is. So this same concept can be applied elsewhere on Facebook. So for example, I could go up here and I could try to find a Facebook fan page. Uh, carbon fiber gear will be a good one. Now obviously this is relational to my niche. So what I'm looking for here are people that have engaged with this particular page. People that are not only liking the pages or the posts on the pages perhaps, but maybe even people that are leaving comments on the page. So for example, these people down here who are leaving comments on these posts, I could simply visit their Facebook page, change the www into the word graph, and copy their ID. Now what you want to do with these IDs is simply build them into a notepad file. And then you put one new ID per line. So each new ID you get, you just paste it onto a new line so you have a big list of user IDs in this notepad file. And then you simply save it as a text file. Now beyond this manual user ID collection, you can also use a more automated technique. And this involves using a script that I've created for my trainings. And it only works for Facebook groups, but the point here is to find Facebook groups that relate to whatever your niche is, and then you scrape the user IDs off of that group, and then you can use those user ID lists to promote to. Obviously, if people have joined a Facebook group, then there's a at least better than normal chance that they might be that kind of person that will interact and leave comments and like your post. And not only that, but they should also be people that could potentially go out and, and complete a purchase through something you're promoting. So what I'm going to do here is now look for a carbon fiber group. So I'm just going to type in the word carbon fiber. Now it won't always show you the groups right here. It's showing me this because it knows I've recently searched for all this. A lot of times you'll need to go down to see more results right here and then just click on groups up at the top and it will show you all the groups based on whatever you have searched. Now you can obviously expand on that search a lot more. I could come up with easily a dozen or more different keyword phrases that relate to what my niche is about beyond just the word carbon fiber. So this is really just an initial list of groups here that I can come up with very, very easily, but I could also go and find plenty more beyond these. So we kind of have two different types of groups that are going to show up here. We're going to have open groups and we're going to have closed groups. Now an open group, you can just go there and view the post that people have already written. You can see what people are interacting. So you could go through manually and try to pick these people off and get their user IDs. 
but then you can also still go and get a complete list of their members right here. Now with the closed groups, this is going to work the same way, except you're not going to be able to see what's going on in the group without actually being a member. However, you can still get access to their member list. Just click on this See All link right here. Now, I highly, highly recommend using Google Chrome to do this particular strategy. The reason why is because, for two reasons really. Um, number one, getting the user IDs is a lot easier to do using Google Chrome. And secondly, um, when you're creating the Facebook ads in the ad management system, there are some things there that you won't be able to use unless you're using Google Chrome. So for those two reasons combined, I simply recommend to use Google Chrome whenever you're not only doing Facebook advertising, but also whenever you're going around and collecting user IDs. So to start with here, I have an initial list of users that are in this particular group. However, down at the bottom, I have this See More link. If I click on that link, it loads up even more members. And if I scroll to the bottom once again, there's still a see more link here. So what I need to do is actually continue to click on this see more link until it disappears. So I should be able to scroll to the bottom of this list and not see the see more link right there. So once that see more link is gone, I'm actually going to leave it there for the time being. If you simply select everybody that is in this list, right click and click on inspect element, then it will open up the HTML code. Now if you kind of scroll through the HTML code, you can see that sometimes when you highlight a part of it, it will highlight something on the screen. So you can kind of use this to ensure you're getting the correct part of the HTML code. But instead of just selecting one user at a time, like one of these pieces of HTML code, what I really want to do is collapse all of this. So each of these are a single user right here. So up above it here, this would be a whole chunk of users. Now you can identify that you have this correctly collapsed by looking for div class is equal to Facebook profile browser list, Facebook profile browser list container. This contains all of the users that are in this list right here. So then down below, you have different sections of users. Now the first one will start with a UL tag, and then beyond that, you'll have more div class is equal to Facebook profile browser list. Now, more of these will get created depending on how many times you click on the see more link. This is why I wanted to go ahead and leave the see more link there so I could show it to you, uh, this particular example here. So notice my UL class. Then if I hover over the div class, as you can see, this is highlighting the users that are down here at the bottom. However, if I click on see more right here, you can see in my HTML code that it generates a new section of div class is equal to Facebook profile browser list. So every time I click that, I will get a new section of HTML code right here. And each of these sections of HTML code contains 
a list of user IDs. So what I want to do, starting with the top one right here, the UL, I want to right click on it and go to copy as HTML. This is one of the reasons why I'm using Google Chrome right here. Um, you won't be able to easily copy all of the HTML from that whole section of code with um, another browser, Firefox, for example. So now, I simply take that code that I copied and I go and paste it into this script that I've provided for you guys. This is on my website, bryantstevensonplugins.com forward slash fb hyphen process hyphen two dot php. I also have this page linked up from the course materials for this class so you can easily access it. So I just go to this text box and paste in all of that HTML code and then I just click on the process button and then I automatically have a big list of user IDs. So I can simply copy them, take them over to my notepad file and just paste them in. And then I can repeat the process and continue adding user IDs onto this list until I have this entire group process now. So I go to the next piece of code here, I copy this as HTML, I paste this in, I get a new section of user IDs. So again, simply continue this process till you have processed each of these sections of HTML coding here. Now once you have a notepad file full of user IDs, as I mentioned before, simply save this as a text file. And then you're going to be taking that text file and uploading it into Facebook. Now, I'm going to go over here to the gear icon and go down to manage ads. Now, in this page over here on the left, I want to click on the audiences link. This page is used to upload my custom audience files, and that is the text file that I just created. Now, as you can see, I've already uploaded a number of different carbon fiber files right here. Some have a few hundred members and some have a couple thousand members. I create multiple text files so I can kind of separate the user IDs based on where I got them from. So for example, if I have a really large carbon fiber group that I'm taking a look at, like this carbon fiber sticker group that has 1,200 members, I could take all of those members and put them in one single file, run some advertisements on it and see if that group is effective to advertise to or not. Whereas if I just went through all of these groups and lumped everybody into one single file, then I might get some results off of it, but ultimately it would be an all or nothing kind of thing where I couldn't really determine out of all of those people which ones were effective to advertise to and which ones were not. So for your larger groups, I would recommend splitting them up into their own separate text files. Some of your smaller groups, um, like this group with 58 members, and if I keep scrolling down, there's even more of them further down there. Um, you don't necessarily have to create separate text files for the really, really small groups. What I will usually do is just use one file and put all the really small groups in there together. So I might have 10 different groups that have 50 to 100 members of these, and I'll put them all into one notepad file. 
Now obviously that's not the perfect situation, but it's a lot better than having to create 20, 30, 40 different text files that you're going to use. Now if you do any user ID generation where you're collecting them manually off of a fan page from people that are actively liking or commenting on things on that fan page, definitely do not mix those user IDs with those you're collecting uh, in bulk off of these groups because your fan page commenter IDs are a higher quality list than you'll get off of these groups. If I were to rank the potential ways that you can target people on Facebook like this, I would put the manual list that you're getting off of the fan pages where you're just collecting people that have commented on a relational fan page. I would put that at number one as being the most effective. Number two would be these group lists that you're creating. And then number three would just be to use other options beyond that. Um, friends of your friends or using different uh, interests that Facebook will allow you to select to target people. So I would put that at uh, number three. So with that said, take your audience files, just click on create audience right here. Click on create uh, data file custom audience and then simply give your audience a name. This is for your own reference. As you can see over here, I've just used a name that uh, lets me know what this list is about. And then down below, for your data type, select user IDs. This is looking for a text file. It can also take a uh, Excel spreadsheet with user IDs with one per row, which is what we've done in that text file. And then you simply find the text file and upload it through the Choose File button right here. So once you've uploaded your file and set the data type and provided a name, the description is optional. Just click on Create Audience and it will show your audience over here in this list. Now it sometimes takes a little while for Facebook to process those lists and make them available to you, um, but they seem to get them done within 30 minutes or so uh, these days. So once your audiences are ready, you can see over here in the status column, it says they're ready. You can then proceed with creating an advertisement and you can use these audience lists to target that advertisement to very specific uh, Facebook users. Now before I proceed on from there, uh, let's see, I want to open up this open group one more time here for you. When you go to the member list in an open group, it's not going to be opening them up in a little pop-up window like it did for the closed group. It's going to show them all in one single list right here. And then down at the bottom, you still have the See More link, just like what we had before. So you just continue to scroll to the bottom and click the link and so on and so forth until the link disappears. So then you do the same thing with this list, once again, you can select all the people and right click and click on inspect element or you can really just click anywhere within these users and click on inspect element. And then you want to look for the same thing again, profile, browser grid, profile, browser, list container. And then directly below that, you want to collapse everything. So notice this time around, instead of having a UL tag first, I have a table tag first. But everything else is the same. 
each of the additional lists of users that I load using the Seymour link, they still create a div class is equal to profile browser grid. So each time I click on the link, I get another section of HTML. But this table section, this is my first group of users right here. And then the div is my next group and so on and so forth. So you still do the same thing. You copy this HTML, you process it to get your user IDs, and then you copy the next set and so on until you've processed all of that HTML code. So while they look a little bit different, the open and the closed Facebook groups, you can still get the uh, user IDs off of them in pretty much the same manner. So now, I'm going to proceed on to creating a Facebook advertisement for you guys. I'm going to do a couple different examples here so you can see some of my favorite ways to advertise on Facebook for Amazon affiliate sites and using this particular strategy. And again, I will still be expanding on this a little later on, uh, especially like when we get to the newsletter classes because I'll be setting up a fan page tab for newsletter uh, lead generation and then show you how you can go about advertising that. So for now, what I'm going to do is on my fan page my post that I have been creating, I want to promote one of these posts as an advertisement. Now, once you have achieved enough likes, um, I want to say they make you top 30 likes or something like that if I'm not mistaken, you have the options down here where you can boost your post and you can do that to people who have liked your page and also to their friends so you not only get, get access to the people that have liked your page but you get their extended friend network as well. While that is an option and something that you can try, it's not going to really be a good option until you have a decent number of likes on your page. It'll tell you the estimated reach here. You can see that there's really only 170 possible people that I can reach that way. Now you can use this other option here. People you choose through targeting where you can specify countries or interests that you want to target. However, this really doesn't give me enough of what I'm looking to do here. So actually go through the normal ad creation system to promote these posts. Go to the gear icon and just go to create ads and this will open up the ad creation page for me. Now there's a number of different types of ads you can create on Facebook but what I am really looking to do for this example is to create page post engagement. This will be promoting a particular post from my fan page. Now, I like this type of promotion because it has a number of different benefits that it can bring you kind of all balled into one single ad. Number one, you can generate traffic to your website that can possibly earn commissions for you get people familiar with your website, pick up some loyal readers that way. You can even promote your fan page posts that are your advertisement posts. So when people actually click on the ad, then they go to a page on your website that has an Amazon affiliate ad. So they could then click on that ad and proceed through and buy that product through Amazon. Now, while you can sometimes get commissions that way, 
do not ever run Facebook ads in that manner with the hopes of achieving a direct profit compared with what you're spending on the advertisements and what you're making from the affiliate commissions. That's not the goal here with this strategy to make a direct profit that way. Instead, what you're really more interested in is ultimately getting people to like your Facebook fan page, which they can also do using this particular promotion strategy by promoting single fan page posts. So you're not only going to get traffic to your site, maybe commissions, but then you'll also get likes on your fan page. Now the third benefit is that you can get likes and even comments on the post itself. So you're kind of generating uh, activity in a way by promoting one of these posts. So now your ultimate goal here obviously is to bring in the loyal readers, but these other benefits can um, be nice bonuses basically. So I'm going to start off by creating a page post engagement ad here. I simply click on page post engagement up top and then I click on the fan page that I want to promote. Now after I do that, it'll load all of the posts that I have made on that fan page so I can simply click on one to choose which particular post I want to promote with this advertisement. So once I choose a post, I go down below here to the text and link section. Now as you can see here, there are two sections right here. There's a news feed and a right column. This represents two different types of ads that I can create on Facebook. The news feed ad will show up in people's news feeds on um, their homepage, whereas the right column ad will show up in the right column advertisements that show up on a lot of different Facebook pages. So if you look at the two different ads that are showing up here, for this page post promotion, the news feed ad is basically showing it how it looks on my fan page, whereas the right column ad is much smaller and it's cutting off my text all over the place. And in fact, it's not even showing uh, this text right here. So for this reason, when I'm doing a fan page post promotion, I typically remove the right column ad because I don't find it to be an effective advertisement for what I'm doing. I want people to see as much of the post as possible here. So I'm just using the news feed right here and I will continue down now to the audience section. So right here is where I enter in my custom audiences that I have created in Facebook. I simply go through them one by one and click on them to add them to my list. As you can see, once I have selected one, they go away in the list, so I can't select them a second time. Now, if you look over here, it says potential reach fewer than 1,000 people. This tells me that my audience is too specific. Well, over here is also dealing with your audience targeting. Just because you punch in your custom audience right here doesn't mean that you can't refine that audience. 
So if you were in a situation where your niche could only convert sales to people that live in the United States, for example, then you might only want to promote to the people that live in the United States by selecting them as a location right here. Now, for my particular niche, I happen to know that the carbon fiber wrap can not only be sold to people that live in the U.S., but it can also be shipped internationally uh, without problems. And in fact, the availability and pricing is a lot better here in the U.S. than it is in a lot of other countries where people are interested in this product. So even with a slightly higher international shipping cost, um, a lot of those uh, foreign buyers still buy it from the United States instead and have it shipped to them. So for this reason, I actually am not going to be that picky with country targeting on this particular fan page. However, you need to highly, highly consider whether that's a good idea or not to repeat for your own site because every niche is going to be different in that manner. If you're promoting an electronics niche, for example, then the electronics sold on Amazon.com can't operate in the UK, for example, without having a special converter plug. So there are a lot of instances where Amazon.com products can only be sold to people in the U.S., while others may be able to be sold internationally. So make sure you consider that. Do a little research on your products if need be to find out. Um, go look in the product details section on those product pages and you know look at the shipping information, even uh, look at the details for it and find out you know, where it can and can't be shipped to. That can help you with your targeting so you're not spending money on people that ultimately can't help you to make anything. So for my site, I don't need country targeting combined with my custom audiences. So as you can see, by just clearing the country out, my potential reach has now gone up to 4,000 people, which is basically uh, everybody that's listed in all those audiences. So now I can continue to refine this just a little bit more to get things uh, adjusted to the point where I'm still not paying for anybody that ultimately can't make anything for me. First off, the age. I always set the minimum age to 18. I don't want any minors following my page because ultimately they're not easily going to be able to go to Amazon through one of my ads and complete a purchase. They're going to have to get the permission of their parent and you know they might even do it on a different computer or something for all you know and you don't end up getting that commission. There's too many ways you can lose a commission or never have a possibility of getting one with a minor. Now beyond that, um, notice when I made that change how it actually wiped out 200 people from my audience. So there may have been 200 of those 4,000 people that were actually minors. And had I not selected that age, I would have paid to promote to those minors, even though they may not be uh, good followers for me to have. So next up, I always look at the language. Since I have an English-based website and fan page, I, don't wanna, I want to make sure that people that follow my page are also going to be able to read English and also type it back as comments on the fan page. So I enter in English all. That gives me both US and UK English. 
and as you can see, that actually dropped my reach by another 600 people. So there were 600 people in that list that may not have even been able to understand my post. So I may have paid to promote them to people that couldn't even read them. So in all, I cleared out 800 people from that list. Um, with a list of only 4,000 people, that's um, you know a pretty significant amount. That's 20% of my list that I could have been paying for but had no results from whatsoever. So next up here, I can also, down here in the connections, click on only people not connected to Carbon Fanatics. So I don't end up paying for people that I have already been able to successfully reach. So now, after that is done, I'm going to go down and set up my budget and pricing. There are other options here though. You have demographics. If you're looking for people with very specific criteria, you know, don't be afraid to narrow down that list a little bit more. You know, if you are doing a niche where you need people that are single or you need people that are married or you need people that are college graduates or something of the sort, you know, you can target all of that stuff and refine your list even more if need be. Um, there are also interests that you can target. However, I usually reserve using the interest in things like more categories for ads after I already have some kind of uh, stats on them. So I'll run some ads using my custom audiences first. And then I'll look at the best performing ads of those. And I might run those ads then to a larger audience, not use any of these custom audiences, and instead target them based on interest. But again, you're, you're going to get worse results when you're doing that with the interest compared with the custom audiences, which is why I only do that with uh, ads that have proven effective for me and for the exact niche that I'm working on. So beyond that here, getting back down to the uh, budgeting and the pricing, you can set a budget per day for whatever amount you can afford. If you can only afford a couple dollars a day, that's quite all right. If you can afford $100 a day, that's quite all right. Honestly, I'd recommend staying on the low side. $5 a day is uh, plenty enough to get you started. And honestly, you wouldn't even necessarily have to run that ad for an entire month. Uh, you could probably just run it for a week and reach a decent number of those people. So you can end up spending uh, just, you know, $35 or so trying to reach all these people. So now below here we have our bidding and pricing. I leave it on bid for page post engagement. This is the default setting and this is what I go ahead and place my order with. However, if I'm working with a brand new custom audience that I've never done before, I can get a general idea of what this ad might cost in terms of each click that I might receive on it. By simply clicking on bid for clicks and then I can go to manually set your maximum bid for clicks and look right here it says suggested bid 4 to 11 cents. So there's a pretty decent chance that I can run this ad letting Facebook manage my costs for me. And I should end up somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, now, if your ad is performing really good, you can beat those uh, suggested bid numbers. 
if your ad is performing poorly, sometimes it can end up being uh, below that. But as long as you do plenty of testing and you don't really put much into a single advertisement until you know that it's going to be effective, um, you can really kind of work this system to your advantage. Now, this bid for page post engagement here, you're not actually paying by the click. You're actually paying by the impression. So if you look at the bid for impressions, it'll give you a suggested bid here too, somewhere between two cents and 46 cents per 1,000 impressions. So again, that might be somewhere in the neighborhood of what I could expect to pay for this particular ad. So I'm going to go ahead and set up this ad so it can run now. So this will show up in news feeds for people that are in my custom audience list and those that um, apply to my particular criteria that I have set up. Now, when you have published an ad here on Facebook, it doesn't immediately go live. They have to review it, and it says up here that uh, it can take up to 24 hours for your ads to go live. Um, I don't know if that actually happens in any situations or not, if they really take that long. I've never had it take 24 hours, so... Um, they really seem to publish them within a matter of minutes, but I don't know if that's because maybe I have a more established advertising account or, you know, what the case may be there. But regardless, they should still get your ads running uh, in a timely manner one way or another. So next up, I want to show you another kind of advertisement. So I'm going to go up here to create ads one more time, and I'm going to go to page likes this time, and I simply select on my fan page. Now when I have done that, I have an images section where I can upload my own images to use for the advertisement. Since this is not based on a fan page post that already had the image and already had content built on it for me, um, I have to set my own image and content for this type of ad. See, my ad just got approved, the one that I just created. I don't know if it's that quick for everyone else or not, but um, I, hope, I hope that it is. So now, what I like to do here, instead of just using one image, I actually like to try out a number of them. Whatever type of images I've come up with for my site at that time already, I'll just upload a different a, a selection of them to use here. And for each one you upload, you're actually creating a separate advertisement but it all goes into the same campaign. So if you're setting a $5 a day budget, then that applies to all of these ads that you're creating and not $5 per ad per day. So you can see which one performs better and get rid of the ones that are not performing as great and just leave the good ones there so you can uh, minimize your costs. Now, I've already uploaded these images, so I have five of these images here, and this will create five separate ads with a variety of different types of pictures that all relate back to my niche, ultimately. So next up, I have the text and links section. Just like before, I have a news feed and a right column. For this example, though, 
I will often remove the news feed and leave the right column because I'm setting my text over here for the headline and the text. But well, ultimately, I can't have as much text with this type of ad as I had with the page post ad. Remember, I had a couple paragraphs worth of text up here and even more down here in this box. Whereas this time, I'm only allowed uh, two pieces of text, a headline and a description, and I'm actually limited in the number of characters I can use there as well. So the newsfeed ad versions of this type of ad will simply not show a lot of information. You can still try them out though um, and simply see which one performs uh, better, for example. But in a lot of cases, I find myself um, removing these newsfeed ads. So if I look at the right column ads, as you can see, these are the five ads that will get created for me, one using each of the different pictures that I have set up. And then the text is the same for all of them. So the only difference is the actual picture. So you can use that as a uh, direct relational link to, you know, which image is more effective for that ad since all the text will be the same. So what you want to do now is set up a headline and set up the text for your advertisement. I like to start off with the word love, especially when I'm doing a fan page like ad. Ultimately, I'm advertising to get people to like my fan page. I'm targeting them based on interests and groups or something that they're already involved with. And so I already have an idea of what they should like. So a lot of these people should love carbon fiber app. So I simply type in some type of phrase relational to my niche and relational to the people that I'm targeting and just put a question mark on the end of it. And then next, down below here, I'll just say, like us to follow, and then you just explain what it is that they're gonna be following on your site. So here I could say, um, daily fan pics of custom carbon fiber final projects for vehicles. So now this gives people something direct that should attract their interests based on what we already know that they should like. And then we're also giving them a call to action here, telling them, to like us and telling them what they're going to get from it. So the next step here, right here where we see landing view. If I click on this, you can see there's a number of options here. One of them is timeline. When I click on timeline, when somebody clicks on my advertisement, they're going to be taken to my fan page, this page right here. So they will land on my fan page. Now, this can be useful sometimes. It allows people to see the content that you're posting on the fan page, and it might uh, help to attract them to actually like on your fan page. But ultimately, there's a lot of stuff here to distract them from ultimately what you want them to be doing on this page. So I'm not saying don't promote your timeline at all. You may want to run one ad for your timeline and then run a different ad and see 
which simply does better for you, which one can bring you fan page likes for the cheapest cost. So the other option for the landing view is to use one of your fan page tabs. You can see the test like page right here that I set up earlier in this class for you guys. So I could select on that page and promote it as an ad. So then when people click on my ad, they don't land on my fan page itself, they land on my page tab. And obviously, if they have never liked my page before, there's not a lot to distract them here from what the ultimate goal is from advertising to this person. They don't have all those other things to get sidetracked on before they do what we're paying to get done. So then once they've liked the page, then we can simply redirect them to our fan page and let them check out our content and stuff that we have posted there so they can get a little more acquainted with it. So again, try both of them. I have had niches where my timeline converts better than a simple like page like that. But then I've had other niches where um, the like fan page tab converts much better than promoting the timeline directly. So I highly recommend to try both out and simply see which converts better for you. So next up, we go down to the audience section. This is just like I did before. I simply go through and select each of my custom audiences that I created before. I clear out my country selection since I am not being picky about which countries I'm targeting here. I change the age, I set the language, and I make sure connections is set to only people not connected to Carbon Fanatics. So then this gives me the same reach that I'm getting with the other ad that I set up. So once again, I can bid for page likes, bid for clicks, bid for impressions. I typically just let Facebook manage it for me. This will ensure that your ad is getting viewed and um, it will be you know, optimized to get more likes for you. So again, after you've set up all that, you can just place your order and your ad is complete and just has to be reviewed by Facebook for it to go live. So obviously, you know, you can take this same strategy and apply it in a ton of different ways, both with Amazon sites and with pretty much anything else you might want to do on Facebook in the future. Once your ads have been running for a little while, let them run for maybe a full day or something, and then go back into your ad list and see how they're performing. Click on a particular ad. Let me pull out one of my older ones that I ran the other day so it'll already have some results on it here for you. So this ad, which I'm not actually running this ad anymore, uh, this was for a page post engagement ad. I spent um, $14.53 here on this ad. I got a total of 120 clicks and 76 of those were post engagement clicks. So that puts me at a cost of 19 cents per post engagement, which is really not too bad. Um, if you look down here, I had one that was at 25 cents and another one that was at 16 cents. 
Now, if I open up one of these, if you look over here at the total actions, this is a number closer to what your clicks is going to be. Sometimes their numbers aren't exactly matching up. As you can see, this says 76 and this says 80. Um, but these are the clicks that you're getting here. So I got 40 clicks to my website page for this particular post. So 40 people actually went and visited my website and saw this page. And this was actually an advertisement page. So that even gives me the potential to earn some commissions off of this ad too. But then in addition to that, I got 26 page likes just from this part of the ad. Um, and those page likes, that's on my fan page. So I'm not only getting traffic to my site, but I'm getting likes on my fan page. And then I'm also getting post likes as well. I got 10 likes on this exact post. Now one reason I like promoting my advertisement posts, not all the time, but at least some of the times, is if you can promote an advertisement post to somebody, and they like your fan page and like the post, chances are they'll be more responsive in the future to other products that you're promoting. These people are obviously not put off by seeing this advertisement. In fact, they may even recognize it as something potentially valuable for them. Maybe they're not in the market for buying some carbon fiber right now, but maybe they see that ad and they're like, hey, if I follow this fan page, you know, maybe at some point, you know, later in the spring when I am ready to buy some to do some work on my car, you know, maybe this person will, um, you know, have another post that comes along recommending um, some type of discount that's available to get this product. So, you know, yet another reason why your uh, post can be geared towards that type of thing, helping people find the best deal in addition to helping them find uh, the products that they're interested in buying. Now, this other one here, um, still kind of the same type of thing. I got page likes, I got post likes, I got website clicks, and I uh, even get comments off of these advertisements. So again, do testing. Testing is some of the most important uh, aspect of this entire advertising strategy without knowing what ads are working and what ads aren't. You know, you're just burning money really. But you don't have to spend a ton of money advertising your fan page. The whole point is just to give it a little bit of a boost to get it going. I've only done a fairly minor amount of advertising on this fan, uh, fan page. I've already accumulated 93 likes and that's just been um, during this week that I've uh, even been working on that and I haven't even been running ads every single day of the week. And just from those 93 likes, I halted my advertisements um, right before this post went live right here. I wanted to see how many of those 93 likes would actually see a new post that I made the following day. And I um, actually got uh, 21 people right away that saw that out of those 93. So, um, you know, that's a pretty decent percentage. Um, if 20% of your likes are seeing your posts that you're making on a regular basis, then, you know, simply building up a couple hundred likes on there can easily get all of your posts some uh, daily exposure and, you know, hopefully gear up some discussion from that point on 
and uh, people can actually share your post. I've actually had some of these 93 people share some of my posts already with some of their other friends, and that may have brought in uh, even more likes for me. I didn't total up my like count to see if I ended up paying for every single one of those or not. So now, the last thing that I'd like to show you for tonight involves the website itself and getting it connected up to our Facebook fan page. Now, if you look up here in the top of my site, in this blank white box, or at least what was a blank white box until recently, I have a follow us on Facebook image right here. If I click on that, I am taken to my fan page, so people can easily get from my website to my fan page. And this especially becomes more important as my site begins to attract search engine traffic and even as I connect it up to other social networks and start getting traffic from them as well, I can then push all those people back onto Facebook and try to get them to follow me there to like my page so they'll get daily notices when I have a new post or see them in their news feed. So now the other thing I have going on up here is this like box. This like box directly connects to my Facebook fan page. So if somebody is simply browsing my site and they click on like up here, then they're automatically liking my fan page over here and they'll start getting updated on Facebook about my site. So this right here is actually different from the like and share that I have uh, down below on each of the individual pages because this is in reference to this particular page on my website whereas this is in reference to my Facebook fan page. So this will actually help to bring in that loyal traffic for me and it doesn't have to originate on Facebook to uh, bring them in like this. So to show you how this works, I'm going to jump over here to this page. I have provided the link for this page in the course materials. This is the like button page in the uh, Facebook developer tools. And you can use this page to generate code for the like box that I have shown right here. Now, all you have to do here, where it says URL to like, simply enter in the URL of your fan page right here. Copy that, paste it into the box. And then you have a number of different ways that you can use this. However, for this particular um, setup, I like to use the box count. So it gives you this design. And if you would like to exclude the share button and just show the like button, you can do that as well. Uh, it's just kind of a matter of personal preference. Then when you click on the Get Code button, you have two sections of code right here. One right here and one down below. Both of these sections of code need to go on your website to get this to show up. So I'm going to walk you through how this is done. Not only this, but I'm also going to show you how this whole uh, header blank box area over here is functioning. This all works using widgets. I'm using the header horizontal widget area that is in the Weaver 2 WordPress theme. And as you can see, I have four text box widgets set up in this header horizontal widget area. Now, each of these text boxes will represent a different 
portion of the header of my site. The first text box is my header logo right here, which also links back up to my home page. The second text box is this blank space right here, which I will later utilize in another class in this series. Now on the end here, this picture, follow us on Facebook, this is text widget number three, and the like box is text widget number four. So now I have also provided a text file for this particular uh, process here. We have text widget two, text widget three, and text widget four. So this file describes the code that we should be using in the three text widgets that make up everything to the right of my logo here. The logo itself is nothing but an image linked up to uh, the home page pretty much. So now if I jump back over here to my widgets, I'm going to expand number two. To get these set up, just click on text here and drag it over and just do that four times until you have four of these text widgets. So in the second box here, I have this code, which is right here, text widget number two. It's a placeholder. I just select this code right here and copy it. And this goes into the text box right here. And then just save your changes. Number three, is right here. This is the follow us on Facebook image link. Now, you need to make some modifications to this code. Notice the text that is in all capital letters. I have this section right here, replace this text with the URL to your Facebook fan page. And then I also have this down here, replace this text with the URL to your uploaded image. Now, the follow us on Facebook image. I have provided this image for you guys, part of the course materials. However, you should still download that image from my site and upload it onto your own website. You can do that through the media link right here. Just go to add new and upload that image. Then once it's done uploading, It'll show it to you here in your media library. Just find the image, click on the edit link right here, and over here in this text box is the full URL to that particular image. So you simply take that URL and replace it right here. Now this first chunk of text here, this is a link to my fan page. So I copy the link to my fan page here. I replace this text with it. And this completes my HTML code. So then I can take this code right here and copy it and paste this into widget number three. As you can see, same exact code here that I already have set up. Now the fourth text widget right here. This is for the like box that we generated right here on Facebook. We need this code and this code to go into this widget. However, um, we don't use it exactly how it is. There's actually a little bit extra that we need to add here. And I cleared out my uh, existing code so you can see exactly how this part works. First, you go here. I have four steps for this text widget. Copy and paste the HTML code from the first box on Facebook. 
this is the first box, and this is the second box. So I take the first box code, I copy it, and I paste it into my widget. Then I proceed to step number two. This has some code already in the text file for me. I simply copy that code and paste it into the widget again. But I want to make sure I'm at the very, very end of any existing code here. So I add it in to the end of my code. Next up, I need box number two. Copy and paste the HTML code from the second box. Copy this code and I put it at the end of my text widget once again. The final step is just this little bit of code and this goes down at the very end. So after this is complete, just click on the Save button and that automatically handles your like box, the follow us button, and should also uh, space things out here for you. Now, one thing that I should point out, for my placeholder, this blank space right here, I'm using a width of 245 pixels for this white space. There is a chance that you might need to make an adjustment to this number depending on your logo. If you have a logo, this can even just be text entered into this first uh, box right here. It doesn't necessarily even have to be an image file. But regardless, it may take up less or more width than what I am doing right here. As you can see, this image is 356 pixels by 132 pixels and I actually have a little bit of black border on the sides as well. So if you're using an image larger than 356 pixels wide, you might need to decrease this number right here for text widget number two to reduce the white space so everything still fits on one single line. However, if your image was smaller than my logo image right here, then you may need to make the text widget number two width larger to take up that white space. Otherwise, these things may end up being crammed further over to the left and you could have a big blank spot over here on the side. So it kind of just depends on what your uh, logo is going to be, how big it's going to be, but you should be able to make some adjustments here to get everything to fit regardless because uh, it's not a very complicated setup. So at this point, you should have a pretty good idea of how to not only create Facebook page tabs, but how to advertise the page tab to bring in new likes on your fan page, and also how to advertise posts on your fan page to increase engagement and bring in new likes as well. Doing that can help to build that loyal reader base for you over on Facebook. Obviously, if you cannot afford to put anything whatsoever in the advertising, you can still build your Facebook following. It will just happen slower. You'll depend on people coming through right here who come to your website from Google traffic or other uh, social networks, for example to follow you on Facebook this way. And then, you know, you may eventually be able to get to the point where you're attracting new people on Facebook as well uh, for free once you have enough likes over there from people sharing your page. Maybe you even get some people that 
find your page performing searches at the top of Facebook. There's a variety of different ways that you can still build that following without putting a single penny into advertising, but advertising will definitely speed up the process. Now in the next class, I'm going to be moving on to Twitter marketing. I've never taught Twitter before from a standpoint of uh, Amazon affiliate marketing and building these websites. So I'm going to begin with a bit of an introduction tutorial guide on Twitter and then I will continue on with teaching you how to essentially do the same thing with a Twitter account that you've been doing with this Facebook account in terms of you know building a following and having posts on your site automatically get published over there. Uh, my second Twitter class that I'll be running for you guys will be including another custom WordPress plugin that'll publish stuff over to Twitter for you.